Okay. I've got a guy that's coming by to do some kind of a interview. He's doing a college paper on the auction industry or something, or on the car industry. And dude actually went and got a dealer's license. But see, he just got a wholesale license, which is way different and easier to get. And you don't have to get insurance. So if you're not in this state, in this county, and it changes as you go place to place. But so he's not really putting that much into it. And as long as you're not buying and selling cars, but I just never knew if anybody had a use to have one without buying and selling cars. This is interesting. We shall see. See, everything for dirty clothes. Danny left his stinking lean pockets in here. Lean pockets. Oh, wow, look. This is an expensive Danny water. Well, it's an expensive Nathan water now. How's it going? Good. Nice to meet you. Appreciate it. Oh, I'm gonna have to get my doggy to see your doggy. <laughs> Hi, baby. Hello. Yeah, I just uh, decided to bring him with me and everything. So how's it going? Man, it's going. It's definitely going. Did you ever find someone to hire? You know, ended up, I, I got a couple people that could actually figure out how to, it's amazing people being able to figure out how to make a little video on their phone or something uh -huh. and upload it. Like nobody could do that. Really? I got two or three from that, but so many complaining that they couldn't or they tried in this or that. And Where are you trying to get them to upload it to? Just drop it in a Dropbox. That shouldn't be hard. <laughs> no, there's a big button that says upload yeah. upload file, or you can just drag and drop it. Yeah, just but, um, download it to your computer, from your phone to your computer, and just drag it in the Dropbox. It ended up being a pain, I guess. I don't know. I, so I'm going to try. I actually have four people in contact on phone. Uh-huh. I don't know. Well, good luck to you on it's that. It's definitely interesting. So now, uh, for, my, for my real estate stuff, um, I had to hire a secretary, and it took me like a long time. Oh, it's a hard time. deal to find good help. To find like good people, and I mean. You, you got know, a good roofer? Um, I no, I, I, uh, can oh. I, I was looking on um, putting putting roof on my, uh, on my house and stuff, but I'm not gonna do it right now with El Nino and stuff. You're paying like a 20 to 30% premium. Guys are charging like three, four bucks a square do the roof and stuff like that so unless you really need to do it do it if not if you can hold out another year i heard you with your rentals and i've got rentals over in spring valley where are you at i'm in el cajon i got a couple off of second street and i got some in san diego and i got a um, apartments or houses apartments duplexes i got a house uh two houses in san diego and i got a fourplex out in uh, calexico so i'm looking to um I'm looking to sell that one because it's, it's a little too far for me to be traveling. I know how that goes. I bought... The rents are really good. In Calexico? Yeah, man. Really? It's really good. It's just I'm, so hard to maintain it, it being this far just, away. And I, I got a property manager. I mean, he's he's earning his 10%, man. 10% is what he's charging, huh? Yeah. That's well, not he, bad. He's earning it because, That's cheap. I mean, it's, 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 a bunch of, uh, it's a bunch of Mexicans. You know, they live across and they just come over here and everything like that and they just kind of stay there i have great i have some great renters like that the only problem i ever have with anybody thing like that is when the people don't speak english if they have a problem they don't bring it up and then it gets bigger it gets and bigger worse. and bigger and i'm like why didn't you just tell so, me <laughs> so what i normally do is you know he talks to them but i try to go out there like every four months i'm like See hey I'm, I'm not inspecting the way how you guys live I, I just tell them to translate it. I'm just coming out here to check to make sure that the stove's working, the pipes are working, there and everything. Go. And I just want to make sure you guys are taken care of. But in the actuality, I'm trying. I'm not trying to spend freaking two, three grand on some freaking plumbing. That's what. I, that's funny. You just said that because I had a deal where a, a small leak behind the shower, mm -hmm. and they didn't tell me. And it ate the shower floor, and next thing you know, it got into the cupboards and it, and it yeah. ate out the whole sink. And I had to rip the whole, whole freaking thing out, thing out yep. man, over like a three hundred dollar problem or something. Yeah, ridiculous. Did that before, and I was like, I learned my lesson. Real quick. <laughs> my first properties I had, I mean, 
You know, I mean, I managed them, but I didn't manage them because I was so busy traveling. So I hired a property manager, well, which that makes it nice. Um, again, finding some good property managers because nobody will take care of your shit like you. Would. <laughs> oh no! And I mean, I've went through like eight or nine, and um, I got a good guy right now, but he's kind of he got big. So you know what happens when they get big, you kind of go on the back burner and stuff like that. So what I might end up doing is I might just property manage it myself and just form my own property management company. You get enough of that going. Yeah, that's definitely a, yeah. And, and just manage it myself and just do the write-offs and everything like that. Because I mean, the taxes, I mean, I'm... I got screwed. Okay, check this out. I bought my place. <laughs> I bought my place before the 54 went in. Uh -huh. I always lived in Spring Valley over there. And like it was just so cut off from everywhere in civilization because yeah. you couldn't get out of there yeah. unless you drove through town for 30 minutes. Yeah. And I went to school with one of the Daily kids, uh -huh. Don Daly, that did all the freeways. Uh, yeah. Daily Construction. They have all. They were. They, they did the freeway. They oh, they okay. had the contract. And that basically, I seen the plans for it. And I go, hey dude, what's up? Oh yeah, they're gonna put the 54 through there. Did you dump that? Oh, or I bought that. I bought that one before okay. they put it through, and then I dumped it after. I bought it for one. 155 from I bought it for my dad. He flipped into another place. Uh -huh. I sold it for 650, 680. That <laughs> was a good pump. I got Damn. 200 cash down uh -huh. in the bank. Bam, done. Guy missed his first payment. I was like, no way, dude. He was so a you... school teacher. So I went after him and stuff. He made one payment. I got it back in 11 months. So you, you, um, repo. You... I went through the repo process. Okay. Oh, so you, um, you kept the note. I kept the 200 grand and I kept the property. Okay. But he did 60 grand worth of damage. <laughs> it was amazing. They camouflaged the carpet. They knocked out all the windows. They found him in the back of my warehouse in a maze of stuff. My dad was here. I wasn't. I was in Montana. They actually had to, he got a chop saw, called the cops. They got all the warrant stuff going through. Six cops there. We cut this lock off. The cops bust the door in. My dad gets back. They go through, yeah. walk through this maze. They get in the back and he's got this like porno torture chamber thing. And he's sitting there in the middle of it with these TV screens. My dad said, man, there's at least 15, 20 screens in there. And he was watching them come for him. He was sitting there with a crack pipe and a 38 special. Wow. And he has all these chains up there where like, and he's got videos of women and stuff and he's making porno there. Torture? He was a, some kind of, whatever that BDSM thing. He was a school teacher though. <laughs> he worked wow. at the fucking middle school. And that's wow. why, and that was the whole reason I figured, well, yeah. he's got 200 grand. Yeah. He's, he seems like a nice guy and he, he's a school teacher. He's got a good job. He got to be able to do this. Oh man, no, he screwed that place up. But I still up 120 I mean, or so. You still got the money. You still kept it. It's still stuff. pretty good. And you still came out on top. I mean, that 200 you got. It's probably worth as much as I got less now because of the market being less uh -huh. than it was, you know, seven, eight years ago. I yeah. sold at the peak. Yeah, but. I mean, you, you did. You came out real good. And right now, the market's kind of uh, at a peak because I was looking. I saw this property. It is kind of up a little, huh? This little duplex that came up in La Mesa. They wanted, uh, it's over there by downtown La Mesa. I think it's off of, uh, you could see it from El Cajon. I, no, not a University Ave. It's a uh, duplex. Each unit is like 1,200 square feet, which for La Mesa, that's a pretty huge um, square feet. La Mesa is nice. La Mesa is nice too. And it's, it's, I know it's close to downtown La Mesa and stuff like that. They wanted like 650. I ran the numbers on it. I mean, the cap rate was like 3%. And I mean, I, I, it just wasn't worth it. I got a deal for you. If you're into buying, I'm into selling that place again. Uh -huh. I don't want it. Uh -huh. I don't want to manage it. I'm actually going to be getting back to Montana. I've got. When you going back to Montana? As soon as I can get there. Okay. I just, I, I'm going to have a place here always to do this, but I've shut down my, I had a big lot down in the middle of El Cajon. I rented the old, old Corvair dealership uh -huh. and it was interesting, but my more like your license is right now because I don't retail uh -huh. in California. Uh -huh. I'm, in fact, the stuff I buy, the last one I shipped out had 900 in California fees. Hey, you go. It's okay, give her some distilled water, right? Hey, you go. Like, no, I'm more interested in that hound out there. She smells. She knows, man. Anytime a dog comes by. But, um, but anyway, uh, so basically what I'm doing is I'm doing a research paper for one of my classes in my business on the car industry. 
and everything. And uh, I'm working on setting up uh, something with the big Mannheim up out in Philadelphia. Yeah. And go talk to those guys out there just to kind of see. The one in Mannheim, Pennsylvania. Yeah. That's the biggest. Yeah. yeah, that's the best one. I'm trying to go out there. I met with the general managers out in Riverside. I talked to the one out in uh, San Diego. What kind of class? What kind of paper? I don't understand that. I'm doing, uh, it's for my final paper. It's from, I'm, I'm in the MBA program. So it's for an MBA? Yeah. Okay. So I got two years to finish it. I just started it uh, about three months ago. So this is your, when you get an MBA, you've got to make a final thesis or something? Yeah. Or is that Pretty what? much my thesis I'm doing. So I chose to do it in the car industry. So it's broken down into the new car business, retail, uh, wholesale, going to the auction. So, so you got your license, and you're not going to buy and sell any cars. Nah, not really. I mean, you got a pl- myself. You if got I, a plate? If I nah, not as yet. If I see something I like, I'll buy it for myself, or if my family need it, or whatever. If you get, if you go back, do you do anything on YouTube with it, dude? You got to get a YouTube channel going, man. I, I, I'm not looking to. I'm not you're looking to make money. You can't tell me you're not looking to make money. Well, like I said, if 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 I can make some money with it, I can. But like, well, right it's just now, a cool thing you're doing, and you you definitely get some um, hits on it. Like, think so? yeah, I do, and I do think that. Well, a lot of people. It's the number one thing I get asked, and I'm trying to get away right now uh-huh. to do more consulting. I do consulting with stock companies for more nutritional things because I make I make vitamins. It's been my main business uh-huh. my whole life. And I want to do more consulting because oh, so yeah. many people want to get into the car business. Well, but it's harder than people think. That's what I was about to say. <laughs> for, for me doing my research and everything, I went to the auction and I saw some of the stuff and I just talked to people. Because when I went, I went to the one up in Fontana. It's a nice auction. And instead of me standing where everybody stood, I stood on the other side with the auction, where the auctioneer stood. And I just kind of watched everything that was going on. Dude, what I saw is some cutthroat, oh, yeah. shadow bidding. Oh yeah. Um, you gotta, you gotta know your shit. And um, it's some shit. Starting out at eight thousand, and then they'll get down to seven, and they'll go seventy-one, seventy-two, <laughs> seventy, and like, oh, okay, five thousand. No, yeah. four, three thousand. They'll start off at three, but they'll act all the way down. Yeah. But and you, you know, in the old days, the guys used to always and if I do sell there, I probably would go right back to it because everybody does it. You have to, but they all bid on their own stuff too. Yeah. So you got to keep track of them guys too. Yeah, I think they had different companies, and I saw those guys bidding, bidding up. Like one would bid up a car, the other would bid up a different car in a lane. So I followed. They have them something like, going around. I followed them for about like ten minutes, <laughs> and I just saw them doing some shady shit. And I saw like a couple other guys with um, it looked like they worked for the dealer or whatever, uh-huh. and they had their little books and stuff like that. And like certain cars that come through, um they would bid it up they would be like the only one bidding it so yeah that kind of like a rep i wouldn't doubt people have like a lot of them have reps like that i guarantee Uh it i guarantee it because i mean when i used to do it in spokane a lot a lot of the gypsy call them a gypsy car dealer they don't really have a location Uh they just go and buy and sell and take them but i was going to tell you when you say going back to Mannheim, dude you'd get so many hits on somebody if you bought a car here wholesale Mm and made your deal driving that car back there when you go back there and sell it at the Mannheim auction because you'll make a profit. Guaranteed, you'll make a profit taking it from here to there. Really? Oh, man. California cars sold that's why I That's why I buy so much here. Well, and it's not so much that. I guess it's so much more, people are so fucking vogue. And the minute that it looks old, like these W140s, yeah. they're worth shit here now. And like, they're worth a lot more somewhere else, but nobody here wants to be, my old Escalade, that's uh-huh. the one I drive, the oldest first year model, yeah. because they give them away here now. That thing's a couple grand at the auction. Really? Yeah, dude, it's so cheap. I just drove it to Montana and back too. But I mean, they're good. But California people don't want them. They want new. And um, I, I saw, I saw like a lot of Mercedes and BMWs. That's what Mon- and that's what I do a lot of. Cause California's and, big on Mercedes. And right? those things were going cheap. Yeah, go so cheap. And go everything. so cheap. But when I went up there, because uh, I saw, for my personal self, I saw like a, a Lexus ES 330. It was a 05 or like 19, 109. The guy won like eight grand for it, which I think is, that's pretty much damn close to retail, I personally. A lot of stuff will get close to retail there. A lot of them are trying to, well, a lot of people bring their buddies, get their buddies in there, and then you've got the retail they're bidding on the stuff. Uh-huh. So that's a whole nother end you gotta watch out. I mean, you see somebody too excited, just bouncing around a little much and tapping his buddy when the car's coming up. You can almost tell when there's a retail buyer there and they're gonna push it 
the farther I, I'm willing I to pay. I saw a lot of pushing. Oh yeah. Like, <clears throat> oh, yeah. I, I'm not in the car business, but I got enough common sense to know, like, man, because that car, I was going to buy it, the, the Lexus, I was going to buy it for myself, but at the same time, I wanted the K. You Did know, you get into looking up the MMRs and stuff? Yeah, I, I looked up, I looked it up. I mean, the MMR said it was like about like 7,800 or something like that, but I still think it's kind of high. If I want to sell it in like a couple of months, if I get tired of it and I want to dump it, there's no room for me to dump yeah. it. And then that thing would depreciate so freaking fast. I'm losing oh, yeah, stock. you're at a, what was it, like a 0304? It was 05. Yeah, got it. That stuff is still going down, yeah. And, you know, I, I, I didn't want to do it and everything like that, but I know definitely um, some more. Car, car business is, is not for me. Uh, just use it to do my research go out there I used to carry paper and I did that into the car business and I did a lot of that I had Car carry paper oh, uh, what? buy here pay here oh buy here pay well in Montana there's no there's no limit on interest really mm. like on the pawn shops they get 28 30 percent a month when people go to pawn shit damn damn that's a good business <laughs> or I guess I mean it's just straight up crazy but so the cars you get a lot of times where you could charge 20, 25% and a payment fee. Well, it's kind of lucrative when people want to buy some shit car and run it around. But then all you're doing is chasing people. Everything that you need is cheaper. Everything that you don't need is more money. So you get a car that's halfway like a Mustang or something, people will just pay through the nose for it. It's just, well, pickup trucks. Everybody has to have a four by four up there and there's a lot of money in the car market. But then you're chasing, all I did was repo and stuff. And like, I, I even ended up buying a cop car with the spotlights. Oh. And whenever I repoed, we bring the tow truck and I just drive the top cop car with the spotlights, flip the lights on out there, nobody come out of the house. Done deal. I already had keys to everything. We just loaded up, mm. but it's not fun repoing stuff and fighting with people and mm. keeping that in your life. <laughs> For sure, that's not the end of the my car business. It's old shit. It's like a special Callaway. They made 200 of them. Because if somebody wants it, they're buying it from me. If they don't, I don't even want to see them. I don't want tire kickers. This kind of stuff. Their wife ain't gonna let them have it. In the story, no. That's, that's the... yeah. Well, like I said, for me going to the auction for that twice. I mean, if I'm gonna do something, it gotta be a lot of money in there for me to do it. From what I see, it's only two times now. Take it with a grain of salt. Your, right mo now, your money's in 3000 and under. Okay. That's. I'll just tell you straight up. Your money, the less you spend, the more money you'll make. Just, it's the oddest thing. Mm -hmm. Just whatever. Because in, in the new cars, I mean, the margins are so thin. And it's because I, everybody I, can get a loan, yeah. I don't know how, how them dealers are making money on them cars, man. It's loans and selling them for more than other people... The, the new dealers can sell them for more than I can because they have the connection for the financing. Mm -hmm. If you got the connection for the financing, all that new stuff goes up. I mean, it's just people just want to know how much a month. They don't want to know how much the car is. But even like, you know, like ten thousand and, and between seven and ten thousand. If you're spending ten, you should be selling for fifteen to twenty. Yeah, but those guys. They're bidding those cars up for like 13, 13, 5. See, that's where, see, you're looking at Lexuses and stuff too. Uh -huh. And you start getting into Mercedes, Lexus, and Beamer. Yeah. You really got to be an enthusiast and know that it has the solar sunshade spun roof or the super duper navigation with the this or that. They get into some, I know, but it's the people that do know it, that's the ones that are usually going up a little bit, like 20% above, because it was like a $15,000 package to add on and they know what it is. So that's sometimes when it's an honest thing that looks dishonest, where I just don't know the car. Uh -huh. But then I've been times when I've been on it, and other people are like, they came up to me. Dude, you're crazy. Why did you spend so much more on that? That was a 99 grand edition Mercedes. They only made X amount of them. X, 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 X. I know why I'm bidding on that. It's, that's especially on Lexus. Lexus has some Nakamichi sound stuff and some different, yeah. they got that's some packages. They got some stuff that cost them money. So if it has like three or four extra luxury packages, uh -huh. that could be why. So, because I, I said to myself, I was like, you know what? I'm going to just learn about Lexuses and stuff. I'll wait. And if I see a good deal that comes up to where it meets my criteria, I'll bid on it and I'll get it for myself and just. If you can handle like the 92 to 99, 2000 LS 400s. And what's going through so cheap right now is pitiful. How old are you? I'm 36. See, it's about your age range. 
from 91, I think, or 92 to 99, the SC300s and SC400s, mm -hmm. they're fucking giving them away. 15 to 2,500 bucks for an 80 to 100,000 mile car. That's cheap. And the big thing about the 300s is it's the same motor without the turbo as a Supra. Oh, really? It's the same body. It's the same thing as a Supra. So all these kids are starting to buy them. Those are going to skyrocket. And the 400s, I'd rather have that. I don't care about no Supra. I care about the growl and the V8 feel and the power yeah, now. Without, I don't want to modify it. You're like me. <laughs> but them things are, and the LS 400s, they're going so cheap. And you'll flip them things for twice your money so fast. Buy one for two, sell for four in a heartbeat. Oh. But. Because another thing is with, with the wholesale license that, that I also noticed, you can't really do a lot with it. You can't do nothing with it except maybe you can sell out of state. Uh, so are you retailing Montana? I'm retailing Montana, but there's more money in these than anything else you can imagine. Uh, the RV is just, it's uh, insane. It, and I can't, it's hard to believe when you go buy them places, they'll have 15, 20 million dollars worth of RVs sitting out I, there. I it's crazy. Stuff where you went to the RV lot. I love the RVs. It's That's awesome. Yesterday, is that the one? Where's that one at? Up in That's Bridge? Fontana also. Fontana? Fontana has two lots. You just have to drive three or four blocks down and over. Uh -huh. But like, yeah. Like them old 78, 79 Dodge RVs, like a 22 footer, mm. running, driving, they go through for five, 600 bucks. You get three, four, five, six grand all day long on eBay. Oh, yeah. but when you get them out here in California or back in Montana, probably back in Montana. No, right? there's none out there. Everything falls apart out there by now of the older ones. Oh, Here's okay. a place to get them. Everybody and their brother buys the newest thing, sets it beside their house, never uses, uses it, it, and then sells it or trades it in or just yeah. boom, it's gone. And then I just go, this one I bought with a roof leak and I bought it for 1150 bucks. This one? Dude, look inside of this thing. Look at this, well, we're just standing here. It's cooler in there anyways. I see, I buy shit like this and then I never sell it. The Brooklyn, they only made 2000 of. I'm gonna end up putting them on a different line. Yeah, you won't believe this. So when are you going back to Montana? Oh, a couple months. Yeah, dude, this is crazy. This is a how you couldn't buy the kitchen utensils and stuff for this place. Oh, this ain't bad. No, I sold it on eBay first listing, and it went for um, thirty-three. Uh huh. I mean, that's a nice. I put a detail on it and stuff. Yeah, but it's, it's real clean in here. It's got a leak in the back. I mean, that, he that knows it. Be an easy fix for yeah. someone that knows about this stuff. You're a cutie pie. And then you probably need like what an F three. F three fifty to haul this or two fifty. I, I would use so. a two fifty or three fifty. I think I wouldn't do a half ton. It's a little yeah, big for that, dude. Eleven fifty is just. So I, how did you haul this here? I paid someone. Oh. It cost me two and a quarter, or I think it was two and a quarter. Oh, that's not bad. From no, Montana down from here? Montana. That's cheap. It's cheap. If you do Craigslist and you find the right guy with the right license, it's a pretty easy deal. Okay. Yeah, I, yeah. I, don't, I don't have the storage space for that. And like I said, I'm, I'm not really, I, I work because I manage construction projects in the islands up north in California and stuff for the government. So I'm like constantly on the road traveling. Matter of fact, in about three weeks, I'm going up to San Francisco uh, for a week to look at, do some training and uh, inspect some projects that I'm managing up there and stuff. So. Uh, property? Um, yeah, um, some government property and stuff. And matter of fact, uh, you know who I'm going to talk to? I know this chick that works, because I, I work at GSA. She works in the automotive section. They're the ones that, in the cars and stuff like that, she works downstairs. I'm going to talk to her, and maybe I can get some insight for when GSA does their little... You see, they do really cool. I bought um, 16 or 17 um, cut fees and... Um, cut fees? Uh, um, blazers, the oh, old okay. military blazers, uh -huh. and the three quarter ton trucks over in Phoenix. Uh -huh. And like, I had to pay 350 a piece to ship them over here, but geez, they made a killing. Everything GSA, but they're doing a lot of it through. There's a place out in um, Barstow now, and they got this place, it's just for GSA stuff, and they're sending all their Humvees and everything through there. Pretty cool. GSA stuff's interesting. And it's, it's pretty, they take care of their stuff. They take care of their stuff. It's neat stuff. It's but just. You want to get GSA because you got GSA vehicles and you got GSA that goes out to ICE and all the different agencies like the Border Patrol and all that. So DHS, I'm going to tell you right now. If it's DHS, I would stay away. What from is that? that? Homeland Security? Homeland Security, which is ICE. See, that's Border Patrol. Yeah, ICE, CBP. Why ICE stay away from it? They harder on them? Yeah. 
CBP, the guy in the green uniforms, they're hard in that stuff because those stuff are down by the board and they, they pretty much trash. Well, see, when I look at the Border Patrol, um, all the Tahoes and the Jeep Rubicons coming through, you can tell. Every once in a while, there'll be like 30 of them down at Odessa. And like you could tell, there's like two of them. You could tell they spent their whole life up at the checkpoint here or something. And the other 28, dude, them guys were chasing sand dunes down by the border, having a blast. <laughs> you could Those tell. Are the ones you stay away from. Yeah, they're, they're hammered. I guarantee. Yeah. And I, I'm sure they upkeep the motors and stuff, but them things are hammered. You're right. I mean, the you know if it says it has about 40, 50 thousand on them. <laughs> it's, it's got 200 worth of miles. Yeah. Yeah, because just the driving hard, the stopping, the going trashing them and everything i'm almost being over i'm almost done being scared of those mm -hmm. those don't scare me so much anymore you're oh, scared right. of explorers you look in your rearview mirror and you see an explorer now it's like oh yeah. and things that's what everybody's got here now for the cops yeah when are you going back to the auction you doing it again not for a while let me know if you're going again and like i go every week up in la and okay. uh but we can meet up there or something and have okay. breakfast or something and yeah. hit the auction for sure yeah it's just to Every time I go, because I just took like two days off and I went up there and just trying to take the time off. That's why you need YouTube there. or something, man. You need to monetize that shit, man. You think, well, I'm telling you. Uh, <laughs> so it's, it's, uh, I, I guess maybe I probably can look into that and everything. But for me, just with all the fees that I paid and everything, I, I just, if I get some, if I keep the license and I get something to where I just break even. What it cost you, a couple grand without? Because you don't have to get insurance if you're not doing stuff. So you didn't get insurance. Probably. No, I didn't get yeah. insurances yet. No I, need to. I was looking on getting that general liability in case. Now, I want to ask you, like, if I buy if I buy a car, should I keep it in inventory and just get the general liability insurance? I think... Or just put it in my name and just put it Well, see, think about that. That's how you can dump them, too, is you can just buy them. You know, I was up at the, um, it was, uh, not Riverside. It's Fontana or Riverside. Riverside. And they had an 88 um buick electra leathered out fully loaded thirty-two thousand original miles mm. like new 840 850 bucks you could probably get that for at least what two or something oh, God. i put that on ebay for 4950 or so best offer no i would i i'm i i had too many cars that way i bought a jeep wagoneer you know them um woody yeah i just bought one of them but they're a lot more and i kind of spent my money so it seems like uh you probably make more money on eBay than you do freaking trying to sell them out here. I don't. I basically it's all what you want to focus on. If you want to focus on um, <laughs> cute dog. Uh, if you want to focus on um, retail and trying to finance people and stuff, nah, that's nah. great. If somebody wants to finance on wholesale, people make money with your license. They never do nothing but buy cars on Craigslist and stuff and take them to the auction. Mine's just more about something unique or rare. Or, but for you to do that, you really got to know, you got to have the time to um, to do your research, find out. You got to be an asshole. You got to be the asshole. I'm not that person. I'm not the guy that somebody's asking 3500 for something. And I'd be like, ah, I'll give you 1200 bucks, you know? And then just fucking beat on them and get it for 14 to 16 and just bug the shit out of them and just be an asshole. If you're that guy, you can buy it for 16 and flip it around for 25 at the auction all day long. You can do that every week, three, four times. And there's guys that do it and they're good at it. Oh, they're so good at it. They're all nice, and they talk their way in slow and easy in the front, and then they bring the hammer down. And I, I've been with some of my buddies, like, and I'm like, dude, how do you just I, rip I, people's guts out like that? <laughs> you know what? I remember one of my cars I was trying to sell, and same guy, he tried to, um, he tried to do the same thing to me, and I was like, my price is firm. And then he tried to come back, and I was like, look, you know what? I'm not gonna waste your time. And I'm not gonna waste my time. They're pretty hardcore. Sometimes they won't stop. They'll just keep my at you. My price is firm. If you don't want to, um. If you don't want to offer me what I want, then we're just wasting each other's time and we're done. And then they'll try to come back. I'm like, we're done. <laughs> and they'll be like, all right. Then they'll come in like 200 less. And then I'll think about it. I'll well, they get right. closer. They're in there in an offerable thing. That's fine. I just had a guy, he made an offer on eBay. I'm asking 13.9 for this Jag, 65 or 66 Jag. 13.9. I put it in a sale for 12.3. He offers me $6,000. I'm like, well, you know, that's just pretty much uh, whatever. What and so then he retracts his offer uh -huh. and offers me four thousand dollars. <laughs> I just, I actually got in trouble from eBay. I'm on like a second warning or something because I actually come back and I say something rude to the people and then they report me or something because it's just, are you fucking joking me? You're gonna offer me less, less than half of what I'm asking, 
and I don't take it for a day, so you retract your offer and then offer me 50% less. less. Like I'm going to take it? That's, really? That's, that's worth my time and yours? But I guess on something like that, don't even, even waste your time and comment. That's what I'm trying to do. You know, YouTube's bad for it because you get so many trollish type people that just want to say, like my ex-wife, she did some stuff on there. <laughs> and like next thing you know, they're making rude comments about suck this. And, you know, you get all kinds of ass. You, you just got to. And I, I respond still. I'll like, I, I tell people it's therapy because like <laughs> some people say some rude shit to me. I'll let you blankety blank, blank, blank. And it's like, and it's just a quick thing. And I block them right away. I, I, I'll, I'll, I'll leave it up to where they can see it. But then I block them to where they can't respond. Yeah. Oh, I just know that irks. <laughs> I just know it irks them to no end. But I got to stop making any response because it's just not. It's not positive. So how do you handle that YouTube stuff? Because you've been doing it for a while, huh? That ends I, up I, being... I, cause this is how I found you, because I started doing my stuff, doing my research and everything, and so I went on YouTube dealerships. I saw you and this other guy, but you were the one with, like, the most stuff, and I started watching your videos and everything. And I was like, oh, okay, maybe he can... He, his video seems like it's pretty good. He goes to the auction. You know, I kind of got a little insight from everything. And everything so then i reached out to you i went out of town i went to the islands for about a month and then when i came back a little bit while i started watching like more of your video i think i watched like maybe like 80 or 90 all the way back to like 11. Or there's a lot of them out there and everything then i was like okay this guy he looks like he know what he's doing then i heard you said you've been doing this for like 25 years or yeah something like that and then i was like okay definitely maybe i should probably talk to him i actually was making vitamins and then I'd help my dad in the dealership, and then I was making vitamins, and when, you remember Metabolife and Rick yeah. Fuel and all that? I came out with that product before they did. Uh -huh. Just that guy was in jail for making meth, and he got out, and he had $6 million. And so before I could get in any of the malls, he took all the malls. Uh -huh. And Metabolife and Rick Fuel, they just went off. But my business was selling that, I had seven stores here. Mm -hmm. And when that all went down to where they made it illegal and stuff, about a year before that, I moved everything, shut my stores, went to Montana, and just started selling to people that were already customers because people abuse stuff, and that was the problem with it. It's a great product. I still take it. I love it. It's a great energy product. Well, kind of, what is it? It's a, it's a naturally occurring ephedra. It's a caffeine mixture. It's a great, um, it was a pre-workout type thing. Yeah, but they, they came out hard and that stuff. Well, what happened is at the last thing, some baseball player, they told him, you've got to cut 40 pounds or you're being cut next month. One boy puts on two sweaters with his jersey over it, doesn't eat for three days, and pops 30 rip fuels, where you're supposed to take two to three a day. Damn, that's killing your system. That's what killed him! That's what happened. He had a heat stroke and he died out there, and they pumped his stomach and they found out all this. Well, then they blame it on the pills. That's not the pills. That's the person. That's it's just everybody. I never had a problem with it, but I shut down and didn't sell to people before because people started using it like that and finding out that you could use it like that. and. Well, yeah, you can use anything that's to get. Really wasn't with the intention. No, it was just an appetite suppressant and good energy, best stuff around. But that's where I went back to selling cars and stuff. I always did it in between, but mm. that's where the fun is. I do enjoy it. It's easy money. So you go to the auction every week? Yeah, I try to go every week. If I'm here, I usually. I preview online, and if there's something. You, that, <laughs> that's that's a, problem. a lot of driving, man. Oh, yeah. That's no. a lot. Oh, yeah, I drive a lot back and forth. And stuff? Cause, I mean, do you mean a write off? Yeah. No, because I don't have a car. <laughs> oh, okay. I got I got 200 no cars. So, I mean, I don't have any car that I have registered that I could write off anything on. But even for your business and stuff. I don't have a car. I don't. The car is provided for me by my business. I buy the car to oh, sell so it. Oh, so you're incorporated. I, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. I drive what I, I drive what I buy. So, I never have anything that I can write off on. Which is fine. I mean, I... It's a definite miss. I get to write off my fuel, if that counts. That counts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You gotta write off one end of it, right? So, yeah, let me know if you're gonna be going to any of the auctions or stuff because I'd, I'd love to hang out at one of them. So, I love going. Now, my other question is, like, when, when is the slow season? Because right now, it's what I noticed when I went there, it's tax season. This is when you want to sell. <laughs> Everybody is bit. I mean, those cars are going... 15, 20, 25% higher than Yeah, wholesale. stuff goes higher right now. I So summer is like the slow season? No, summer's still busy. You want to buy, if you're buying season, you want to start buying in October, middle of October. October, November, December, January, and early into February, and that's it. Those are your buying months. Other than that, 
That's a big thing. Don't let that get out. No, no, no. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> but seriously, that's that's when people, are, especially October, November, holidays are coming up. So a lot of women are making people sell their stuff. They're like, oh, you got to sell that project set in the garage. And like all that stuff starts coming through. Yeah. And then end of the year, new car trade-ins and um, businesses doing lease returns and different things. It's huge. So new models like, coming out. Is there were a lot of competition? Where a lot, do a lot of dealers go around that time frame? Like That's where everybody, that's honestly, it's an unhit up spot where everybody's just dumping stuff. Everybody's just dumping stuff. It's like these new car dealers, they don't want the shit on their lot. And they got the new year models coming out. They're selling them all. They're getting all these trade-ins. They can't put them on their lot. They have no room. And it's too old and crappy for them anyways. They just dump it. And then another thing I, I noticed is that um, is that a lot of a lot of the cars that's going through right now is kind of crappy. Nah, I don't doubt that. They're running out of stuff. <laughs> You're getting a lot of... Um, a lot of people fix stuff just to take it to the auction. That's a whole other end of it. I mean, with your license, you could have a mechanic and buy people stuff that's broken. And like this guy here, he'll pop a he'll pop an engine in something. We'll get a three four hundred dollar junkyard engine with a three year warranty. I mean, a three month warranty. He'll pop it in for three four hundred dollars R and R plus three four hundred dollars for the engine. Six eight hundred bucks. You got to run and driving good engine car again. So just depending, people will dump these things for three four hundred bucks for a nice car. These guys are getting them going, having 14, 15 in them, and dumping an auction for 35 or something. Yeah, exactly. People actually buy it for 35? It just depends on what they've got. This guy here deals in um, BMW 735. Not 735. I'm so stuck in the 80s and 90s. Um, the 760s and the 750s, you know, the newer ones. And that's why he buys them. He knows exactly what's wrong with them. And there's this one part in the engine that fails on every single one of them. And it takes a $2,000 tool to fix it. The dealer bought the tool, and everyone that comes through with that problem, he buys. He sends it right to this guy. He fixes two, three of them a week. He'll have a red Hemi with the black strap. I mean, I don't like them. I think they're, uh, oh, they look like a Rolls Royce. No, they don't. They look like a Chrysler, man. I actually, I like a 300M. The 99 and 2000, right before they came out with that, the more rounder. I love them cars. They're cool. A little spoiler on the back. But them, I don't dig. But he makes a mint on them, man. So, oh, so he bought the two thousand dollars part. His bought his he, he has he used to work for a dealer, and he started his own place. And now this dealer, that guy is so important to his dealership. He brings him. I bet you he brings him eight to ten of them a month. Um, Six. Yeah, between the Hemi's and the BMW seven um, forty, oh. or on um, seven fifty. So he's making a killing, man. He's busy but as that can dealer be. Probably, he's He's probably making about maybe fifteen hundred on the dealers charging that person like three. I doubt he's even charging him that much now. He's got it down to a science. He's got he's so got he popped them things out in like a day or two. One to two, three days he's got a one in and out over there. It's kinda cool. I he's definitely good well, it's neat because he's specializing, getting a niche, getting good. He's also good at um power stroke pickups. When you have to fix this little thing behind the engine. It's quicker to unbolt the cab and jack the cab up in the air and then just do it from behind it. And nobody does it like that. And so he specializes in those and he'll have them in there. Boom, he'll have the cab up within like an hour and a half. All taken off, the whole cab, everything separated, just a motor sitting there in a frame. He'll do the work, drop the cab back down, bolt it down. And he freaks people out too when they bring it in for that and he takes their cab off. It's crazy. I mean, you don't think that you'd do that, yeah. but it's how the thing's designed. What I noticed is for you to make money, you got to put the time in, and I, I just ain't got the time right now, man. Let me buy you something. When you get ready, let me know, and I'll search okay. it out. You see that caddy out there? Ah, uh -huh. dude, forty-six thousand original miles. Damn. And one owner. It's got uh -huh. the Continental and the Vogue package. Let me check that out. Man. You gotta see this. I won't sell that one. <laughs> in fact, I split it with my buddy. Uh -huh. I'm doing like I said. That's exactly my friend from high school. We split it. But I bought this thing. Nobody. I got one guy bidding against me. I ain't gonna tell you how much until you see the inside. I'm gonna pop the hood. Yeah. Let me put my dog in the car. Yeah. You got AC? Yeah. You leave your AC going for your dog all the time? Yeah. I do too. <laughs> I burn so much fuel doing that. You dig this? Does that only does that only work on the 125 or all over? Uh, all over. When I was in LA. Pop that thing, man. Well worth it. I'm, oh, fix I'm fixing a window on it. That's all oh, I have. Oh, what's wrong with it? How much you cop this for? Uh, 
Dude, 1150. Man, this is nice. <laughs> it's you like probably, new. You could probably flip this for about what, three grand? I'm putting it on eBay for 49.99 or best offer. This is clean. Over, in fact, that little thing in the envelope right next to you, that is what was wrong with this window. A discontinued part, that's, so there it is, one of them yellow in the seat. That little yellow part. Wait, oh, you got it off of eBay? That's what keeps this window up, that oh. little yellow part. Oh, Dumb stuff like that I fix, but yeah, man, I'll ask four, five, six, I'll get 38 in a heartbeat on this. From out of state. AC's ice cold. I bought a cap and rotor and stuff, but that's it. You gotta see, I gotta show you this. I'm so proud of this. This looks so good under here. Woo! Isn't that crazy? This little guy never drove it, man. Damn! I showed, a, I showed a girl this car. I sent her pictures. She goes, what do you think? I don't know Snoop Dogg. I said, that's because you don't have this car. Damn! <laughs> it's clean. Oh, geez. yeah. It's nice. This looked like what Manheim did to it, huh? They I did it. Up. I oh, did, it. did it. I detailed it after, yeah. I oh, love doing my car wash. I love doing my shock towers and stuff. That, guy, that little guy pays stinking 900 bucks for the Continental kit, I'll bet. Um, the Continental grill. But stuff like this is no brainers, man. You can drive this and just yeah, make this money on it. Car. That's, that's where you want to get it from. The old people. They took care of it. You they know took they care did. Of that stuff, man. And they paid 35 grand for it back then or something. Barely, maybe drove it, maybe five, six thousand miles a year. I'll drive I this mean, anywhere. The rag looks really good for the year. It does, huh? Except for this, but I mean, you know, normal wear and tear, 46,000? <laughs> I'm surprised nobody didn't try to bitch you up on it. Stuff like this goes cheap. Nobody wants it here. And I'll tell you what, people in Montana, Texas, okay, I'll tell you what, I don't know what it is about Texas. Anything I buy with a, kind of car. anytime I buy with a, with a wheel on the back, I can guarantee you a black guy from Texas is buying that car from me. I don't know why. Yeah, they like the, fifth wheel. I, I like that fifth wheel. Yeah, I, I, in fact, when I seen this, a, when I seen that, I thought it used to have one. No, nah, it's not but, a North Star. North no, Star, thank God. The yeah, them are just, man. I've got one right now, just total <laughs> junk. I hate them. I mean, the, the freaking head gas can go out on that. It's and they all do, too. It's done. They had a they had a 36,000 mile North Star Eldo 01, uh -huh. and it went through for 1,200 bucks. I wouldn't touch them. Me neither. I, I, I know I what's wrong with it. I took a damn thing with the head gas. They're great cars until the head gas yeah. does. They run, they're fast. He's like, I'm not even touching Well, that's a North Star too, did you know that? Which one? This one? Uh, yep. Oh, I didn't know that. Yep, they, they put a 4.0 North Star in them. Yeah, I, I, I wouldn't touch them for a nope. But he told me, he was like, I'm not even, four grand, I'll fix it for you. And I don't even want to fucking take your money. Because it's worth it. Because he said if I fix it, and a little bit more, it's going to just go out again. They hate Supposedly, they've made a new gasket and new bolts that if you buy them, it'll work. In fact, he'll do one for about, I think it's 1500 bucks. Mm -hmm. But you got to do both of them. So what's this guy? Is he, a, um, is he a registration service too? Or? Well, there's two businesses there. That one's registration. And then this guy's a mechanic, but he does smogs too. Oh, okay. So he's not smog only. Is no. there money in that? Doing smogs? I don't know how they do it. They do so many of them. They do so many of them, and there's just no real cost up front. Uh -huh. I mean, once they own their equipment and stuff, I mean... Because the equipment, because one of my uh, my Asian buddy, he, he just got into it. He said the equipment cost him about like a couple grand, maybe 10 grand. That's He's nothing. smog only, though. That's nothing. See, if they're smog only, I think when you go to them, you pay more. Uh -huh. See, and most of them don't do repair. Like, that's the biggest problem I always have with smog shops, is you go to get your thing smog, and you're like, no, it didn't pass. Well, what do I do? You don't really know what to fix, you know? And then it's like, well, I don't know. You have to fix it and come back and get a retest. Yeah. He can actually fix it. It's just so cool. But this one, I, my, my car right here, like I said, the cat went out. Um, I got to get a new cat for it. So oh, I mean, he'd be the person to ask on your tranny. The tranny? You want to ask him? Yeah. And it was James, right? Jason. Jason. Gotcha. You know, I, I bet you about 30% of the people... Look at this, this is a good motor. It just had an engine fire on the top. Oh. So he's putting that in something. Hey Hector. Yeah. Uh, my friend from YouTube, um, hey, how's it going? Jason. Um, a transmission for O2? 2000 Accord. V6, 3.0. Is that something you can do? With a tranny? Tranny's bad? Yeah, the, um, I got the tranny code on there from uh, first, First to second gear, it kind of stalls a little bit, so um, more likely to tranny. I probably got maybe $1,500. 
1300 13. Bucks. So is that to rebuild it? 13. To, to rebuild it, huh? Yeah, to rebuild it. Well, that's nice. That's better than just putting a junk one in right there. And maybe he needs a... Have, are you, you got a good connection for a catalytic converter? They want too much money. Maybe just buy it at the junkyard, probably, huh? What car? That car? car? That Honda? Yeah. yeah. They want they want how much? Eight fifty? Ah, from the dealer, it's like eight fifty. Just um, put a used one on if it. If I huh? go after market, I'm looking at like the, with my the thing. If I get it, about two fifty. If I go retail, about three something. Yeah, it's good. I don't think it is cheaper than that. Okay. Three, three, I mean, it's gonna be like three something. Yeah, and thirteen hundred on the tranny. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thanks, man. All right. When I pull that out there, yeah, it don't run good. Nah, it no. don't run good. <laughs> it's, uh, you're not smell the gas. I figured you heard it. Yeah, you could smell the gas, huh? It's not yeah. burning at all, right? No, it's yep. Not burning. Yeah, exactly. Okay, it's thanks, Hector. That's all he does is pull trannies and stuff, huh? He does a lot of repair, like that one. He's pulling the head and doing a um, uh, either a valve job or a head gasket uh -huh. right now. Yeah, he's good too. So good. Really? Yeah. Thirteen. That's that's kind of cheap. For doing a rebuild. Yeah. 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 At first I thought, oh man, I thought, oh man, he's hired for replacement removal. And uh, you said rebuild. I'm like, oh whoa, that's just freaking awesome. Yeah. That'll definitely last a bit longer and stuff. Because uh, because I was studying if I should keep this car because I I put so much money into it just like maintain it. <laughs> I wonder if anybody gets the kind of businesses on. Oh my goodness.